Let's try some South Korean beers, shall we? First up, we have Height. Height Extra Cold. The giant extra cold here, it really reminds me of something I'd see in like an American beer can, you know? Um, I'm expecting that's what this is gonna be, but uh, let's find out. Yeah, it smells not particularly strong. Not expecting great things from this. This smells like a pretty, uh, pretty generic beer. Yeah, that's very thin. I really have not, in the scheme of things, uh, drank a lot of sort of, you know, widely mass produced American kind of lager beers that come in cans that would say things like, you know, extra cold on the front and giant, giant capital letters. Uh, but let me put it this way. If you put this with a bunch of other, you know, American beers and you had me do a blind taste test, honestly, this would be just about the same as any of these things. I mean, if you even compared it to like a Budweiser, it's not, it's, it's, it's sort of in that general space. This is a, a very sort of not particularly complicated, uh, dare I even say kind of watery, um, very basic beer. I don't know what else, what else to say. This is a, this is a lager beer made with, you know, cornstarch and rice as kind of additional additives, um, but there's nothing sort of special about it. Very basic. Up next, we have OB, Premier Golden Lager. Doesn't actually say Golden Lager on this. Uh, just says OB Premier, but that's that's what this is. This is the, the main OB Golden Lager. Supposedly this one is going to be slightly heavier on the hops. Yeah, nice standard, standard lager color. Yeah, not a lot, but there's a very little hint of a sort of dry, bitter, hoppy flavor. So if you want sort of a lager that has, I don't even want to call it a bite. I've used that in the past to describe certain lagers. I say, you know, it's got a bite to it or something. It, it doesn't even have that. It, it's just got a little bit of, little bit of crispness on top of a sort of very standard beer body, right? It tastes like beer. It's very much in that category of what you'd expect when you think, you know, give me something that's just a basic kind of, you know, Pilsner style lager. Perfectly acceptable. Continuing on, up next we have Terra. So this is a beer also manufactured by Height Jin Ro. And it's, as I described, the uh, the new secret weapon of, uh, of Height Jin Ro, uh, bringing the company back into a very competitive space relative to some of the rivals, such as uh, OB. And uh, I'm curious to see how this one tastes, not only compared to um, both of these, but also height in general. It's got the same color, same same head. It's definitely better than height, for sure. Um, I, I still, you know what, I would, I would put this, I would put this in this, this Tier, tier of, of, of beer, tier of beer, where it's out of the category of the not good stuff. You know, the light beers and the, the stuff where you, I, again, I would, not to be a bit of a snob, you know, but I'd be like, yeah, I'll, I'll pass. You know, turn my nose up at it. But this is not particularly, I would say, in a category much above that. It's sort of existing in this almost like nether region between the stuff that I would pass on, the you know the light beers, and then, um, or you know, frankly, honestly, something like height, um, and then the things that are in the proper category of what I'd think of as a lager that if I saw it, I'd think, yeah, you know what, I'll I'll have one of these. It's it doesn't taste like much. I've, I've said this in some some videos in the past. It has the the flavor of beer in the most basic sense but there's not much beyond that. It's pretty simple, the body is acceptable, but there aren't a lot of particular notes. And it's maybe a little bit, it's maybe a little clean, I would say, that there is something of a clean, cleanliness to it, but that's about the only thing that's standing out for me. It's, it's, it's fine, but I don't know about much more than that. Let me take another taste. 
Yeah. It, well, there's, again, there's nothing unpleasant about it. It doesn't have any of that sort of low grade beer back taste that you get with stuff where it's just, you know, it's almost like a, you know, sour stuff that's, that's not good. It doesn't have any of that. There's not really much else to this. Number four is Cats. So this is a brand of beer manufactured, as I said, by OB. Uh, so same company that does OB, also does Cass, but uh, they've you know, kept the brands um, separate in terms of at least the name. And this one, yeah, should be a bit sort of, you know, not as hoppy, it's described as being kind of soft. So these pretty much all look the same, so. Doesn't smell like anything. Again, it's in that it's in that sort of subgrouping below what I'd call kind of standard regular lagers that I'd say, sure, give me one of those. It's above the light beer kind of, I would say, unacceptable category, but it is really teetering on that line. Here, here's maybe the difference. There's slightly more flavor to this one than Terra, but at the same time, I'm getting some very, very minor hints of that not so good, you know, lower grade kind of mass produced beer feeling um, to this that again, it, it pushing it kind of dangerously close to the, I would say the, the you know, the lower, the lower level. So let me, let me just make sure, I, I, I think I know where I'm gonna rank these, but there's unfortunately, yeah, just slightly too much of that almost very slightly sour back taste in my palate, which I, I sort of definitely take off points for that. Last but not least, or perhaps, who knows? Let's see. We have Cloud. This is the only one made with nothing but the four basic ingredients of a Pilsner style lager beer. Quite a bit of a head on this. This one also seems to be the most, um, no, actually, no, they're, they're basically, they're almost all about the same color. All right, gotta wait for the head to go down on this one a little bit. Some Belgian ales takes forever for the head to go down. Um, this one's a little, a little faster, but got an acceptable smell. Um, nothing uh, unpleasant. It's got, um, yeah, a nice, a perfectly nice kind of lagery flavor. It's a little bit, and I've, I've used this to describe a couple beers, Japanese beers. I would describe this also in the category of sharp. I think it was Sapporo that I used to describe that term. It's not like a tanginess, again, it's not, not quite that, but there's sort of this, this feeling of like, aha, yeah, I'm drinking a lager. I would say there's this note to it that you don't really get with generally European lagers where they can be, you know, maybe hoppy and bitter or they can be crisp. Um, but this one, yeah, it's this note that I associate with you know, s certain other kind of East Asian lagers, which is sharp. Um, and that's perfectly fine for me, that, that works. I, I have no problem with that. So, um, the, and, and definitely the hops on this are coming through, like now on my palate, I can, I can definitely um, have a bit, there's a bit of that kind of hoppy dryness. But I'm gonna just take another taste to see sort of how the, the malt and the hops are, are balanced. That's a little softer actually on the second taste. Uh, there's not so much of that sharpness. It's a little bit more, it's a little smoother on the second taste. Let's recap. In last place is height, extra cold. This thing is, I would say, pretty much in the same category as like, a light beer. You know, if you if you want to have a, you know, a, a Coors Light, a Rolling Rock, you know, something in this space, this is this is pretty much what you're getting. Um, there's there's nothing really going on here other than just a, a very sort of mediocre, I, I would say, kind of on the watery side here. Um, Cass, slightly better than, than height, but even there, what, there's still some of that, what I would describe kind of unpleasant, uh, almost tangy or sourness in the palate afterwards. So marginally better than height, but still not ideal. Terra is gonna be the first beer where there's not gonna be anything about it that I actively dislike. It's just not gonna have much flavor to it sort of on top of an acceptable beer body, right? As in, it's, I wouldn't say it's necessarily watery, but 
it's not particularly uh, noteworthy in terms of any flavors other than that. So you just, you just have something that feels, I mean, it does feel clean, I will give it that, but aside from that, it doesn't feel particularly um, interesting in the palette. There, there really aren't any interesting notes to stand out. And then I'm gonna put them tied for first. Is Cloud and OB Premier or OB Golden Lager, you know, depending on which um, name you wanna go with, uh, both of these for me really are in the category, and I'm gonna move this here a little bit, are in the category of lagers that I thought were completely, completely good. They, they definitely worked for me. Um, there's a very slight difference between them. If you prefer your lagers to be slightly on the hoppier side, and you wanna have a bit more of that kind of bitter dryness, definitely you wanna go with OB Premier. If you prefer your lagers to be slightly maltier, but nonetheless still have a little bit of that, as I describe it again, it's not a, it's not a hoppiness, but it's a, it's a sharpness, then Cloud's gonna be the one that you wanna, you wanna go for. Again, if you're, if you're a fan of, I would say Sapporo, then you're gonna like Cloud. That's gonna be the one you wanna pick. OB more if you, um, yeah, if you prefer your, your hoppier pilsners. Uh, if, if you were asking me which of these would I pair with a meal, uh, I'm doing either of these two. Either of these two would be perfectly fine. If they weren't available, you know, I, I guess I would do Terra. I would, I would pass on these. Um, again, unless, unless, and now let's talk about food for a second, you had no other options when you were out eating. Um, the, you know, all of these beers, but, but you know, these two to three especially, right? Um, they work quite well if you're pairing them with sort of, I would say sort of the heavier, stronger flavors of Korean cuisine, right? So either if it's, you know, rice-based, stuff like, you know, bibimbap or really spicy stuff like tteokbokki, uh, or you've got, you know, japchae or something like that. I'm not gonna bore you with a long sort of sonnet about how much I love Korean barbecue, but the same kind of idea, right? If you're out, if you're out with friends and you want just sort of a nice, clean, refreshing beer to go with those um, you know, strong, bold, uh, heavy, kind of meaty flavors, delicious, delicious flavors of all of all different kinds. Um, you know, a clean, nice, refreshing beer, one of these two, is is perfect. So that's my assessment. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Obviously, you know, please be respectful. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, if you did, you can go ahead and like, subscribe, um, hit the notification bell so that when new ONTAP content launches, you can be notified of that. So I'll see you next time.